Okay, so uh, now that we have the block all cleaned up, we've got our main cap set on our engine here. We're going to start torquing them down. Um, first things first, we're gonna put a bit of ARP loop on each bolt, and then we're gonna torque them down. The torque spec for the main cap bolt is gonna be 33 foot pounds and 90 degrees. Okay, we're gonna snug up the main caps now. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you evenly apply um, pressure to each bolt. The cap is interference fit into the block, so you don't wanna uh, torque it one way and potentially crack or damage it. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure it goes down square to the block, and uh, then we'll torque it down. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna torque down the caps to 33 foot pounds. I'm going to do one cap at a time. Um, that way I know that it's been torqued and torque to angle. Um, so we're gonna do the center one first. 33 foot pounds to start. And you wanna go just the 33 foot pounds. Don't over torque it or you will over tighten the bolt. Then we're gonna go to 90 degrees. Zero our gauge. Okay, and then we're gonna do 90 degrees. Um, when you're torquing to angle, you just wanna make sure you leave yourself the space. Um, so we're gonna be going from here to here. Um, so I'm just going to leave myself a little more room so I don't have to bend into the table while I'm doing it. And then we reached 90 foot or 90 degrees and our total torque value was 71 foot pounds. Um, so what I like to do when I'm torquing the angle, make sure that when you torque it down you get around that 70 foot pound mark. Um, it won't always be at the 70 foot pounds, could be higher, could be lower, but you know that you have the maximum yield of the bolt. And then 71 again. So we're just going to repeat that process for the rest of them and then move on to installing the torque plate. Okay, we've got our main caps torque now. We're going to flip the block over, put in our head studs, and then we'll slide on the torque plate. Okay, so before we put the torque plate on, we're just going to put on our uh, torque plate head gasket. This is just a standard Jay-Z head gasket we use for putting the torque plate on. Um, been reused a couple times. Okay, so next up we're just going to torque down the torque plate here. Um, the torque spec is 80 foot pounds divided by three. I like to divide it by four just so it's a little bit easier to tighten it down, not as much movement. Okay, so now that we've got our torque plate installed, we've torqued down our main caps. We're going to go ahead first off, just like before, we're going to make sure that our main cap, uh, our main tunnel is round. Uh, there's no taper and then we're going to go ahead we'll check size after that and then we'll move on we'll check our bores um, this engine is uh, untouched did not have a failure on it and uh, the main bolts are still being reused um, a couple things to note before we check it obviously um, the arp head studs typically do have about a half thou of uh, out around effect on the main tunnel um, so we probably expect to see at least a half thou out around to begin with with a uh, jay-z um, you can probably expect to have at least um, an allowable one thou out around. Um, I wouldn't recommend that for anything that's crazy high horsepower, um, but for what this application is going to be, that should be okay. Um, so we're going to measure now, we'll see what we have, and then we'll conclude um, based on what we find, and then decide if we can move forward or if we have to take any steps further. Okay, so we're just going to zero our gauge to the first main journal. Um, now that we have it zeroed, we're just going to check front of the bore and then just behind the oil groove in the block. And then we're going to check for right around. Okay, so on this one here, we are getting about um, just under one thou at around in the widest point. Um, you come about a quarter inch to a half inch down off the parting line. Um, you get closer to about four tenths of a thou at around. 
um, and then taper is good, less than two tenths, so that's that's the real important one. Um, there is a centricity built into the bearing, so there will be a slight add around in the bearing itself. So as long as when we slap the shells in here, we measure it, make sure that eccentricity is within allowable limits, the add around shouldn't be that big of an issue. Um, another thing is bore to bore. Um, we don't have any sort of misalignment issues or uh, more than a half thou of size difference. Um, about four tenths um, from here to here, that's the largest one out of all of them. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the front cap um, because this is not long enough to measure the center one. We're just going to remove the front cap and we'll measure the um, number four main bearing journal. Okay, so we've measured number four main journal. Um, same as the rest of them, um, just under a thou at a round. Um, again, because this engine's untouched, didn't have a failure on it, we just got head studs in it. Um, that's within the factory specification allowable limits, so um, this should be okay. We're not going to um, be making any super crazy power. I think it's about 600 horsepower. Um, you know, an unopened JZ has been known to handle up to a thousand, so I don't think we'll have any issues there. Okay, now that we've checked our um, out around our taper, we're gonna go ahead now and just verify the size. Um, we're gonna go to the minimum spec of the uh, main tunnel um, that uh, ACL recommends. Just as a baseline, um, it's gonna be 2.5992 inches. So what we're gonna do here, always zero our tool, make sure that we have it set, and then we're gonna set our tool to the specification we're looking for, and then we'll zero our bore gate into it. We're seeing on this block about a half thou tighter than the uh, specification they recommend. Um, there is kind of a margin of error. I would say that we're potentially seeing a little bit of the head stud torque um, affecting the main tunnel bore because it is untouched. Um, this was not a line honed with that much of a, uh, a clamping force on it originally from factory. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install the main bearings into the block and then make sure that that uh, difference in size um, and out of round uh, doesn't have any effect on our clearances. Um, then we'll take the crankshaft out uh, measure that and see what we're working with. Okay, so now that we've uh, measured our bearings for taper, um, we've verified that they are all uh, within two tenths of each other. Just before we waste our time putting them in the block, I always like to do that. Um, whatever you measure does usually translate into the clearance you see when you do put it in the bore. Um, but what we're gonna do now, uh, we've wiped them off, clean them down, we're gonna place them in the block. Uh, one thing to note on the Jay-Z, the first main bearing um, does have a bit of a wider profile to it. It also has the indicating lock or indexing lock on the opposite direction, so you can't put it in the wrong hole, uh, but just something to note if you do open a package and you're not sure, that is why this one is wider. Or not why it's wider, but it is wider. Okay, so now we've gone ahead. Uh, I wiped off the ARP loop from the caps just so I wasn't touching it, touching the bearing, installing the bearing. You don't want the, uh, a little bit of uh, ARP loop between the bearings or anything like that. It will affect your measurements. Um, so make sure clean. Um, so when you're handling everything, it's nice and easy. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead. We've placed our hardware in the same locations they came out of. So we're gonna go ahead now and install it back in the caps. Um, a little more ARP loop, torque these down, and then start measuring. Okay, we've got our main caps torqued down to the 33 foot-pounds and 90 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead now, cover this up, we'll pull the crankshaft out, measure our crank main uh, journals, and then set our bore gauge and see where our clearances are at. We got our crankshaft out here now. Uh, we wiped down the journals so we can go ahead and we can start measuring. Um, for the journals here, we're looking for uh, out around a taper, just like anything else. Um, under two tenths, uh, two ten thousandths is the ideal uh, measurement for the Jay-Z crank in my book. 
Um, I think the factory specification is up to eight ten thousandths. Um, so larger margin of error on this than there is on an RB. But we're going to go ahead. We're going to try to stay within um, the two ten thousandths of an inch on most builds. But we'll see what we get on this crankshaft here. And then we're going to go ahead and measure our block for the oil bearing clearance. Okay, so we've measured our first journal here. Uh, we're getting a maximum of two ten thousandths of an inch. So that's very good. That's exactly what we want to see. Uh, we measured it in nine different locations just to double check, triple check. Um, we always want to make sure that we are getting uh, accurate measurements, especially on a crank that has been polished, um, just, to case, just in case for some reason something's been missed um, or has been over polished and uh, puts a dip in the crankshaft or something like that. You don't want to leave that um, and put that into the service. Um, so we usually try to measure um, three different locations. So center, forward and backward. And then you're going to go to go about a 33 degree angle center forward and backward just to check again and then like another 33 degrees forward center and back of the journal um, you can't do that on every single crankshaft journal sometimes you're gonna have to work around the counterweights um, first one we can do that so we're gonna do that um, so we're gonna go ahead now we'll measure the rest of them and then we'll measure the clearance in the block Okay, so we've measured the crankshaft main journals across all seven. Um, the whole crankshaft is within two ten thousand, so that's really, really good. Um, so we're gonna go ahead now, we're gonna set our micrometer down to the clearance average of the crankshaft. We'll just quickly check our clearances, make sure within range, and then we'll go ahead and we'll measure each individual one uh, against the crank or against the block, and then uh, start recording our measurements. Okay, so we got our uh, bore gauge set up to the uh, clearance of the crankshaft or the uh, dimension of the crankshaft. So we're gonna go ahead now, we're gonna check our clearances just rough. Um, okay, so we've run our measurements through here. Um, unfortunately, this is going to be a bit too tight for his application. Um, we've got about nine tenths to one one thou um, of clearance. Um, so that's probably gonna be a little bit too tight. Um, if this was a factory engine stock power, I'd probably throw it together all day long. Um, but since it's going to be running a little bit more power, probably around 600, um, we're going to probably opt for the plus 1000 main bearing clearances. Um, I will have to inform him, let him know that what our findings are. Um, and then in the next episode, we'll probably be swapping out the bearings and uh, re-measuring and verifying that is okay. And then moving on with the remainder of the steps. Mm -hmm.